Hey, this is OXDF. Uh, more Hack the Box coding challenges. This one's called Triple Knock. Uh, it's easy rated, and I think this is actually what an easy should look like. Um, it's a I'm given a list of kind of log lines, kind of simplified log lines, and I need to go through and find users who have had multiple, uh, three failed login attempts within a 10 minute window. Um, so I have to take these logs, I have to parse them into different uh, timestamps and different way down to a way to look across a sliding window. I have to organize them by user. I have to look whether they're failed or success. And I kind of have to then parse through the data um, and loop through the data and look for ones that meet this criteria. Um, it's not too hard. In fact, um, it definitely qualifies as easy, but it's it's much more of a, you have to actually do a little bit of work in organizing and putting the data together. So um, we will use uh, default dictionaries. We will actually write our own class. It's not necessary, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. And I think this is a neat opportunity to do so. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's me about it. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I've got the uh, challenge prompt up here and I guess it's really the full editor. Um, and basically we're gonna get, we're gonna get input that looks like this. The first line is going to have two numbers. And the first number is the number of uh, lines that follow. And the second is the number of users in the sample. Um, then the number of lines, you get the lines. And each line represents a username, a date, which is a day slash month, um, European formatting. Uh, and then it's the timestamp, which is hours, minutes, no seconds. And then it's success or failure. And they aren't explicit in the instructions. I wish they were, um, but there's this line down here at the bottom that I don't believe is part of the expected output from having read this a few times. Um, I believe the expected output is just a list of usernames, because that's what it says. The goal is to print a list, a sep base separated list of user IDs that are flagged as targeted. And then down here, it says they're targeted because they have three failed login attempts within a 10 minute window. Um, I wish the Hack the Box uh, designers of this challenge had been a little bit more explicit to actually say that in the thing, but given the name triple knock, and this line, I'm going to assume that's what I'm looking for is three failed login attempts within a 10 minute window. Um, I also wish <laughs> I'm getting detailed here. I wish they would have put um, a, like a box, like just show exactly the input here, maybe in the box and then maybe have a box for the output and none of no other language, you know, make it very clear. This is the input, nothing else. Um, but I'm going to assume this is the input. This is the output. And then the rest of this is more text. Uh, so we got to parse this thing. We got to find the failed logins. Um, we got to sort those logins by user, and then we have to look across a window of all the failed logins. Okay, are there any three within a ten minute window? Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to delete all this and just get going. Um, so we can do something like we can say um, S N. What they call here is equal to input dot split. Now, if you don't give split any um, parameter or input, it just splits on space. So this and this, are the, that is the same thing as passing nothing. So we can do that. Um, I usually try to pass the space in because I just I think it's more readable and you don't, have to, you don't have to know that fact. You can just know that you can see it and know what it's doing. So we're going to split on space. Um, and then that's going to give us two, two, uh, two integers, but they're really strings. We need to convert them to integers. So we'll say, um, we'll say int x for x and boom. And that should give us S and N. We could check that doing print s n and run code and we can see uh oh, build in function yes, no oh it helps if i call input i'm actually so there we go and the output is 10 3 so it looks like that's working good um we're good there. um cool so now i need to read each of the lines so we'll do um four underscore in range uh is it s or n s um so because S is the number of lines. And, we're, and the reason I do underscores, I don't really need to keep track of the line number. So underscore is just in Python. When you are looping and you have a variable that you don't actually need to use, you just save it as underscore. Um, I don't know why. That's just a convention. We could call this X and just not use it. We could call it I. doesn't matter. Um, all right. So now we have this. What are we going to do? We're going to read a line. So we're going to input. Um, and how are we going to parse it? I think what I want to do. And this might be overkill for, and this would certainly not like win me any speed things, but I'm going to go ahead and create a class. So we're going to say class event. And then we define the dunder init, which is how it starts. And it's always going to take in self, and then we can also give it a line. Um, in fact, we'll go ahead and type in here. So string like that. And then we are going to return an event. And you have to put it in quotes because otherwise you get these circular defining things. But if you put it in quotes, then the type checker knows that it's actually part, it's actually an event object, but then Python doesn't get angry at you. 
Um, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to read in, um, we're going to take the line. We're going to do line dot split. Um, and there might be a new line on the end. I can't remember. So we're just going to, just to be safe, we're going to strip white space and then we're going to split um, on space like that because we have spaces. And then we can say, let's see, this would be self.user. Uh, the next one is going to be, I don't actually want to, I'm not going to bother storing this exact object. So I'm just going to, I'm going to save it as a temporary variable. So we'll say like date, time, success, like that. Um, now I want to process, I really just need like a timestamp. So I need, and I want to get the total minutes. If I just get the total minutes, um, that'd be perfect. Now, typically I advise against parsing your own timestamps, but this is a weird thing because it actually says in here, assume all months are 30 days. So I don't want to use a time library to actually like look up a real date. I want to actually parse this myself. So I'm going to say, first we need to say like, say like day, month is equal to, is it because is it, it's day month, uh, date dot split on the thing like that. And then we need to make those integers so we can do um, same thing here, int x for x and boom. And that should give us that. And then we want to also do the same thing with time. So we can say hours mins equals int x for x in uh, what did I call it? Time dot split on semicolon or colon. Boom. So that should give us the days, the hours, the minutes, the months. And now to convert this to straight minutes, we can say self dot timestamp and is equal to, um, let's see. So we're going to start with the month. We'll say month times 30. So now we've got day. Now we're counting in days. So we can put a parenthesis here and say plus days. So now we got the total number of days. Or day, yeah, the other days. Um, now we're going to convert that to hours. So we'll say there's 24 hours in a day plus hours. And then we want to convert this to minutes. So we'll take this whole thing as is hours times 60 plus mins. And that should give us a timestamp that is the number of minutes from into the year, I guess. Um, and then finally, we have, we also need to know if it's success or failure. So we'll say self.failed is equal to, uh, and then we can just say success equals, and then what was the quote? It's going to look like uh, failure. And so now we're going to have this, uh, after the init runs, we're going to have this object which has a username, it's going to have a timestamp, and it's going to have a failed, which is a Boolean. Um, it's either going to be true or false. So now, as we're looping over here, we're going to read in our input. And all we need to do is say, we'll say event is equal to event of input, like that. And we can do something like we do print event here. <laughs> this will be interesting. So we should run this and we'll see um, these event objects are just coming here. Um, you don't have to do this, but it's, I find it, especially if we have any issues while going, it's really nice to be able to see, like to print this more pretty. So we can do a def uh, wrapper cell. And it's going to return a string. And this will be when I print when I print this thing, just kind of like I did here. What I want it to look like, um, and I guess let's, so. Normally, what I would do is just return, like make an f string like this. We'll say event, and then we can just do self dot user self dot uh, timestamp self dot success, and then close our bracket. And if we run this now. Uh, we have an error. What's our error? Oh, nothing. Failed. Try that again. And nothing shows up. That, but lots of space. Lots of space. That's weird. Um, what's going? Ha. Huh. Um, interesting. It's, it's actually parsing these as tags. I got some sort of HTML injection here. Um, this is interesting. Uh, huh. Because I got, this is, so there's some sort of HTML. Okay, we're gonna ignore this for now. I might tip, we might wanna ask the Hack the Box team to look into that, but we will for the moment uh, make this like this, and I think it's gonna work fine. Yeah, okay, so that was weird. Um, we will avoid the HTML injection. Uh, but you can see now we're printing out our event objects and they each have a user. So user three a times we converted this date into a minutes and then we have, we did fail because it was failure here. Um, cool. So now we have these events um, and I don't actually want to print them. What I want to do is I'm going to say, uh, let's say failed logins is equal to, um, and remember I said, I want to sort these by user. So what we're actually going to do is come to the top here uh, from collections import default dict. And now I can say failed logins equals default 
dictionary.dict. And that will be of a list. And what it's going to do is going to create a dictionary for me. And if I try to, if I try to access a key that doesn't exist, it's just going to initialize that to an empty list. And so now I can say, um, say we'll say if event dot failed, uh, failed logins dot see uh, event dot user dot end event. So if the login failed. We're going to append to our, we're going to get the, um, we're going to do a dictionary. We're going to get the list for the user and we're going to append event to it. And if that list doesn't exist, it's just going to be an empty list because we did default dict. Um, we could alternatively, if we don't want to do default dict and just make this a normal dict, we could say if user in uh, failed log, if user not in failed logins, failed logins event user equals empty list and then do this. But this is just much cleaner. Um, okay. So now we've got all of our users. Let's, I guess we can come down here and check it. Let's do a print failed logins. So now we run it and we can have, here's our default thick. Uh, user two has one failed login, two failed logins, three failed logins, and user three has one. Um, looks about right. Two, there's a failure for two, there's a failure for two. So yeah, so we have our by user thing. Now, we want to sort these by time. So we're just going to do, we could, we could do a sort after each of each ad, but that would be inefficient. So we'll say for user in failures, fail logins. There it is. Uh, so for each user, we're going to say failed logins dot user dot sort. And I'll just sort them all in place. Um, the sort function does that. Okay. Uh, now we need to go through each each user and figure out if there's any 10, any three logins within a 10 minute window of fail. So we'll say, um, for user dot events in failed logins dot items and items is going to return a tuple of the key, key and value for each item. So it'll be user two and then this list, user three and then this list. Um, so now we can, that's what we put, we get both those at the same time. And then we say, um, we're going to need to do kind of a sliding window. So we're going to start at the, we'll start at all, you know, let's say there's a hundred failed logins. We need to check them one by one to see if there's three. So we'll say uh, for I in range len events minus two, because we don't want to overrun the end because we're checking three every time. Um, hopefully this will make sense when I show it. Um, if events uh, I plus two minus events, uh, I is less than 10. So what that says is if events two is less than 10 minutes after events, I, and we know they're sorted. So, so we're going two ahead. And if two ahead is less than 10 minutes from the current one, then all three of those must be within a 10 minute range. We will, uh, uh, we need to store this somewhere. So we'll say, uh, targets is equal to, and we'll make this a set. I don't think, I mean, we're not going to add more than once, but we'll just, that seems safe for now. Um, so we can say targets add user. Now down here, we should have, let's see, print uh, target. Let's do that and see what it looks like. Uh, ah, okay. We can't sort because we haven't created, a, we, when you sort something, you have to define the greater than operation. So we're going to do that here. Def greater than, that just takes self and other, and it's going to return a bool. I think technically I should come here and say events like that and like that. Okay. So now what are we going to do? We're going to return self dot timestamp greater than other dot timestamp. And that's all it is. So I'm defining how do I handle greater than, because I need to be able to compare two things to sort them. And so by doing that, I've now put that in here. Um, let's run the code and see what happens. Uh, unsupported types. Because I'm not subtracting the events, I'm subtracting the timestamp. So timestamp there, timestamp there. I'm running you again, and we got out our. Okay, so we are we printed our set, which is user one. Um, let's run again to see if we can user one, user three. So we're getting. You can see we're matching very nicely what we're supposed to match here. Um, we're just not printing it right. Uh, so I think all we need to do is a dot join. Uh, that and what that'll do is it'll take all the objects in targets and it will join them with the space. Um, now I might need to sort this. Uh, I assume I can sort a set. We'll just put sorted around that and run. It's 
hanging and we solved it. um so i think that's it quick easy challenge um this one took longer than so i think this one's actually i think this is actually true easy level as opposed to some of the other ones like min max which was said it was easy but it's, i would say it was really still very easy um this one actually had to think about we had to organize our data um think through the problem and how to do it and uh but, but once we did it was not nothing too crazy here so um thanks for hanging out with me i'll be back uh, with another one soon thanks bye